Hello everybody, this is Miranda the Hybrid and welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. Now, we are not in the same room that we're usually in. This is my traditional art room because today we are doing our first truly traditional tutorial. Today we're discussing markers. I wanted to go over this because they're becoming an increasingly popular medium to use and they don't quite work the same as pencils or paint. There's certain techniques and rules and tricks I want to teach you and mind you, you can draw however you want. This is just the way I approach drawing with markers and it's helped me make sure that the pictures are clean and also just, I found some secrets with the mixing of inks. That sounds really mysterious, but it's kind of true. So here, let me show you what's up. Now here's the plethora of materials I'm going to be going over today. I know it looks like a lot, but I'll try breaking it down into a way that makes sense. First off, let's go through our types of markers. There are multiple different types, maybe five, six even, but the two most common are alcohol-based markers and water-based markers. This simply means that the material, the fluid that the ink is suspended in is either water-based or alcohol-based. Now there are things called paint markers, but those really aren't markers to me because it's just literally paint. When looking for markers, there are several large brands you wanna pay attention to. Let's go for the alcohol ones first. First big one, Copic. Everybody loves having these. The problem is they're extremely expensive. One of these costs $8. The smaller one cost me about five. So you can just imagine how much that entire bag cost. The nice thing about Copic is if your pen runs out, you can just pop off the tip, pull this out, and drop new ink in. It means it's almost infinitely recyclable. And if the tip of your pen runs out or gets old, you can just put in a new one. So in the long run, if you use them over and over again, Copics are actually one of the highest quality and most economically efficient markers. They also don't stink really badly like some other ones do. Another large brand that you can find is Prismacolor. Let me check to make sure this is alcoholic. <laughs> oh my God, yes, that is definitely an alcohol marker. <laughs> I find I don't like Prismacolors as much because they don't feel refillable. They might be refillable, but I have honestly not seen them with the same amount of sheer ink cartridge refills that you can get from Copic. On the other hand, they're a little bit less expensive. Then of course, after that, you have off-brand things like whatever this is. It's so old. <sighs> oh my God, that one could make me go high. That is a lot of alcohol. I believe this one is also an alcohol-based marker. <laughs> I think it is. It's just not quite as smelly. The second type of marker you're going to see are water-based markers. These are my personal favorite. They're a brand called Tombow. They used to be inexpensive maybe four or five years ago, as in only two and a half dollars each. Now they've gotten very popular and they're more like four dollars each. These ones <laughs> have no scent whatsoever, so they're very safe if you're sensitive. They're also fun because since they're water-based, you can pull out a paintbrush, dip it into some water, and kind of use them a bit like watercolors. In fact, you can use them to accentuate watercolors. Or vice versa, you can use watercolors to accentuate them. So let's go over some basic chemical properties and tricks of alcohol markers first, then I'll go over the water-based. The first thing I want to talk about is if you're going to be sketching something like the underlying drawing for your markers, it's extremely difficult to actually erase once you have ink over it. Let me show you. So we made a cute little heart here, right? Let's take our gummy eraser and let's try erasing the pencil lines underneath of that ink. Oh dear, it's not coming up at all, is it? So if you want to do an underlying drawing for a marker picture, make sure that you can either hide it or you want to make the marks on purpose. Same thing goes for water-based. Now, one of my favorite materials to draw with is actually a ballpoint pen. I'm doing that edgy thing we all did in school and I am drawing an eyeball. Now, if you use alcohol-based markers with ballpoint pen, something fun happens. Let's grab one of my lighter colors to demonstrate this. What happens is that the marker, which is normally this color, see it's a very light kind of seafoam green, the marker dissolves 
the ink of the ballpoint pen, which means that you can get some really interesting shading tones without even using a separate kind of color. I've used this on quite a few of my drawings in the past. See? It even carries a bit of it afterwards. This picture right over here, for instance. I did most of this shading with a ballpoint pen, and then I used a very, very low saturation, low opacity marker to really drive the shadows in. It's lost a bit of its purple tone, but you can really see it in this jelly part of the arm. That was not a different marker color, it was a gray marker, but it mixed together with a ballpoint pen to create a purple color. So what if you don't want this cool trick? What if you just want straight black lines? That's when you bring in archival ink. My personal favorite brand is Prismacolor, and I've used them multiple times over and over again, but there are other ones. A bunch of them are in here. Faber-Castell does a really good job. Micron does an extremely good job. These inks are nowhere near as soluble in the alcohol as the ballpoint pen was. Therefore, they will hold their lines. We just created this little flower with some basic hatching. Look what happens when I put over the Copic. You can see that the archival ink did not smudge anywhere near as much as the ballpoint pen did. In fact, the colors are all very clear and the hatching is still extremely distinct. What if you're doing outer space or something? Is there anything you can use to lay over it? Let's lay down some really, really dark blue. And I'll show you one of my favorite techniques. What you want to do is find yourself a gel pen or a very opaque sort of marker pen. I find paint pens sometimes work, but on the other hand, the color from the marker underneath, even if it's water-based, can bleed upwards into the paint. So I usually use gel pens. The gel pen will lay nicely over almost any color in any marker medium with a high amount of opacity. In that way, you can do nice bright highlight designs over a dark marker color. Now before I go on to water-based pens, there's a very important rule that I need to teach you for when you're working with markers. Say we're just shading a sphere. Say the shadow color is blue. Say the ball color is maybe yellow. What color would you put down first? Your answer should be the yellow. Markers are extremely, extremely dense in their pigment laydown if they're still brand new. That means whatever you put down, you cannot take up first. So when working with marker, please, 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 for the love of art, use your lights first and then shade with your darks. With paint, unless you're using watercolor, you always have the option to go over again with some white, especially with acrylic, oil paint. But when it comes to marker, once you put down a color, it stays and there's no way to lift it. So lights first, then tentatively and carefully put down your darks. There are of course some techniques where you can ignore this, such as if you're just blocking in colors and you know exactly where things should go. For instance, if we're just making a little city here quickly, Let's just pretend there's some buildings. There's gonna be a little antenna coming off of there. And you know exactly in your mind where things are going to go. Then in that situation, it's okay. It is more for concept art. But if you're new to markers, just be very careful of the fact that once you put something down, it's not gonna come back up ever. You may also notice that my marker has two different ends, a chisel tip, and a brush tip. You can use both of these in different specific ways. Chisel tips are good for really, really hard thick etches and getting things down quickly. Brush tips are nice because they almost act like a paintbrush. I can go very lightly and I can go really hard and then lift up and get a gradient. They're also good at making thin then thick lines. Now, unless an alcohol-based marker is getting kind of 
dry, it'll still have a pretty, pretty thick, consistent laydown. So I tend to use these only for darker, more colorful pictures. And then I'll just be extremely careful with my lighter colors to get the gradients I want. This is where we start getting into water-based markers. Now, a water-based marker will not do anything to this ballpoint pen. It will barely drag its color because this pen is not water-soluble. These pens, however, are. These are water-based pens. So for instance, let's make this fun little swirl here with a few shapes coming out of it. And I'm going to do a little bit of hatching. Who knows what this is? This is just for a demonstration. Let's grab our Tombos. And I'm going to get this nice light blue, <laughs> if it'll let me. This is the normal color of this Tombow, extremely light blue. This is what happens when I put it over that. You can see its color is dragging out. It doesn't quite have the same amount of solubility as when I put the Copic marker over the ballpoint pen, but you can still do things. Normal color, color when mixed with the pen. Big difference. These, instead of having a brush and chisel tip, have a brush and a pen tip. Pen tips are good for fine details, line art, things such as that. Hatching. And the nice thing about water-based markers, and sometimes a mild caveat, is that they mix extremely well with other water-based markers. Look at that gradient. Isn't that just lovely? Just check that out. That's without any sort of blending pen whatsoever. It just did that by itself. I find that it's also easier to make sure that water-based pens don't streak. Let's do some color lay down, just one next to another, over and over again. You might notice that there are some small, mild lines forming. That's called streaking. It's when you lay the pen over something that's already been painted over. Unless you're super duper quick with laying down alcohol markers, they will get pretty bad streaking. I still haven't quite figured out how to fix this. You can see where the lines were put down. You could, of course, grab a blending pen and get rid of them like that, but then you're gonna dilute your color ever so slightly and it won't look natural. If anybody knows how to make their markers not streak, could you please drop it in the comments? Because even though I love working with markers, that is still something I haven't figured out. Let's get back to water-based, though. The same rule applies to water-based as does alcohol-based in the fact that you really, really, really want to put your lights down and then your darks. It's pigment, and since pigment works on the subtractive color wheel, it's going to keep going together until it reaches something that resembles black. On the other hand, if you want to blend water-based markers, you want to put down your dark first, and then you want to pull it away with a lighter shade. See that? A lot easier. Because if we put down our light shade first, just like this, and then we put on our dark shade, it goes right on top of it and it doesn't mix at all. You have to use your light shade to pull the dark one and blend it together, just like that. These two pictures here are really, really good examples of what happens when I use water-based. Good color laydown, good saturation, and really nice blending in certain areas. I am using cell shading for the most part on this picture, though. In this picture, you can really, really, really see the intense amount of blending I did to make this guy look glassy. You can also see that I used ballpoint pen to do his shading and detailing, and it didn't get muzzy at all. The background color, however, is alcohol-based. That was done with Prismacolor. And that means that it was a lot easier to lay down the white gel pen. So you can definitely mix materials. This is a mixture of all of the materials I usually use when I do a marker-based. This leaf here was water-based. You can tell because I used my colored water-based pens and I blended them slightly with a yellow marker to make the leaf look light green. And this picture over here was honestly mixed media. This was alcohol-based marker, water-based marker, watercolor, and then I even used colored pencil for certain areas. So you can really mix and match. The one above it, however, was all water-based marker. This picture here is a really great example of what happens when you put in too many darks. 
It's all over the place, and it's really not one of my best pieces at all. I'm going to be remaking it since I didn't use a good technique. Here is an extremely good example of using a dark water-soluble pen to do the outlines, and then a lighter colored water-soluble marker to blend it inwards and make it look like it's glassy or glowing. So I hope that helped you guys. Markers are honestly still a really, really, really new material for me. I only started them about three or four years ago. So if you have any of your own tips, any of your own comments that you want to drop down below if you've been using markers for a while, go on ahead. You guys can help everybody else learn too. It's not just me doing the teaching. So as per usual, drink your water, get your sleep, believe in yourself, and chase your dreams. I will see you guys on Thursday. Bye-bye. <laughs>